I'd like to show you a couple of Ruby scripts which aid in the creation of walls and windows. I'll just go up to the Preferences and load these extensions. I'll use Double Line by Didier Burr of the Ruby Library Depot, and also Windowizer by Rick Wilson of Smustard. So first we'll take a look at D-Line. It's located up here on the Draw menu under Double Line. And the functionality here is very similar to the dline command in AutoCAD. The way it works is that you can draw a line, a single line, and it will be represented by two lines in plan. This script also can generate a 3D model directly from that single line that you sketch. I think the best way to understand this is to actually draw a line in plan first, just to see how this works. And then we'll have it create some 3D geometry for us afterwards. So I'll set justification to center. Now it will only create 3D geometry if you have both caps. So I'm going to start this demonstration by saying we'll just create a start cap. We'll use a draw axis which actually creates a construction line down the justification line. In this case it will be down the center of the wall. We don't need to draw a face and we won't make a group. This command was written with metric units in mind so it automatically converted to my current units which are feet and inches. So it's giving me these weird numbers. I'm just going to change that to 7 inches wide and 8 feet in height. OK. I'll just orbit over here. Click two points to create my first line. I'll click a third point over here to create a right angle wall. And then press return when you're done. The line work will be added. What we have here is a start cap on the wall. We have a construction line, which is called the draw axis, and another one over here. It's pretty straightforward. Let's just take a look at this when we actually use it to create 3D geometry. Once again, double line. This time we'll choose both caps. We don't need the draw axis. We will draw a face. And let's go ahead and make a group as well. Press return to generate the geometry. So because we created a group, you can see here that if I click on it, we see the bounding box representing the group container. I have to double click on it to actually go in and have access to the individual edges and faces. So this script can save you time when you're creating walls from scratch. Before we can create a window, it's necessary to cut an opening in the wall, and we don't need a Ruby script for that. Double click on the group to open it. Press T for the tape measure and pull a guide off of the lower wall edge. Set it at the sill height. I'll choose 3 feet for this. Press R for the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle right on that guide on the surface of the wall. Dimension it. I'll type in 6 feet, 4 feet. Press P for the push pull tool and push this face through to the other side to create an opening. Then I'll click off to the side to close the group. The Windowizer script requires a face selection in order to operate. So we actually have to come in here and draw some new geometry in the opening to represent this new window. I'll use the rectangle tool and I'll sketch out a rectangle starting at the midpoint here. And I'll go over here, orbit around while I'm drawing that rectangle. And I'll snap it here to this midpoint. So now we have a surface right in the middle of this wall thickness. Windowizer is set up to create a window that faces in only one direction, and it's going to do that according to the face orientation here. So let's reverse the face prior to using Windowizer. Then right click again and choose Windowizer, Window Eyes. Here we have a dialog box that allows you to set in all the relevant dimensions of the frame and the mullions inside the frame. I'm just going to leave everything at the default for this demonstration, and I'll choose two rows and two columns, which will give us four panes of glass. Click OK, and we instantly have a window. It couldn't be any easier. Now if I go around here to the other side, you'll see one of the issues with this script is that it's designed really to be used from one side. If we want to have this part of the frame and mullions filled in, it's necessary to go over here and select this face, Use the Move tool, press the Option key, 
and copy it from this edge to the other side. And then come over here and reverse the face so it faces this direction. Finally, triple click to select All Connected and make a group to protect the window. Of course, if I was going to have multiple windows with the same proportion, it would make more sense to create a component rather than a group. When it comes to framing a traditional structure, there's no better script than House Builder. I'll just go ahead and load that as an extension. House Builder was written by Steve Hurlbut, and the way it works is it has its own tool palette with all of the functionality built in. So just to break this down, we have global settings here. We have floor, wall, gable wall, and then we have the ability to edit the properties of the wall or move a wall. Here's the roof tool, and then here's the window tool. You can then edit the properties of a window, move a window, or delete a window. Here you can add a door, change its properties, move it, or delete it. And here are the credits. So to start this process, I'm going to go into the global settings and set things up the way I like them. I'm going to change the studs to be 2x6s. And I'll also change the default roof pitch to be 4 and 12. OK. Then I'll create my first wall by clicking right here. It has all the defaults that we set up earlier. I'll just click OK. And then I'll click two points to create the wall. I'll make this 26 feet long. And we instantly have a stud wall. This wall is grouped. And if we want to change the properties of the wall, we need to select the group, go here and click on this button, and we can change something about it. Let's say the plate height is now going to be 8 foot 6. So everything is adjusted. Note that if you go in here and select a single stud, go into Entity Info, you'll see that it's actually a group rather than a component. So this isn't quite as efficient as it might be, but this is still a really excellent script. OK, let's say we want to have a gable end wall. We'll click on this button. All the defaults are set. I'll click OK. Click on this lower end point right here. Draw this over. Let's make it 20 feet wide. We have a gable end wall. Now I notice a collision problem right here between the two geometries. I'll select this wall and go into Wall Properties. Change justification to the other side. In this case, it moves from right to left. And I'll change the plate height to 8 foot 6. I really should make that change in the global properties so that every time I make a wall, I don't have to adjust this individually. We can go ahead and copy this wall as an object just using the Move tool. We can copy it from one side to the other. And I could change this so that its justification is on the other side to pop it inside there, just like the other one. Now let's say we want a window. Click on this tool. And it says there's no selection, OK, or the selection is in a wall. This is an indication of how basically all these tools work. You need to pre-select one of the walls that you want to change and then add a window to it by clicking the button. Now we can set in the window size and its relevant properties. Click OK, and then go down here on the base of the wall. Look at that colorful gizmo that appears. It's green and red, and it's showing you where that window would appear if I were to click. I'll click right here, and the window is instantly framed. If we don't like that, we can select the wall, Go to Move Window, and then we can pick it up, move it over, click again, and all of the framing updates. It's really pretty impressive. In a similar way, you can add a door, and it gets framed as well. So pretty cool script by Steve Hurlbut. You can also come in here and create a roof. 
Before I do that, let me just add another wall over here. And the roof type can just be gable or shed, no gambrel. I'll go ahead and create that right here. And then it looks like I need to make some adjustments to that. So I'll go to the properties. I'll change the justification. And I'll change the plate height. And that's looking good. And then I'd like to make a roof. So I'll come over here and click this tool. And we have a choice of gable or shed. OK. I'll click the left corner. And then the right corner. And then basically we're drawing a rectangle. We'll come over here and click this point, and we instantly have a roof framed. So again, an amazing script, which is useful for framing, although in most projects I don't go to this level of detail. I would just represent the walls as faces, a real time saver if you're trying to figure out how many linear feet of wood you need for your structure or how you're going to frame some tricky intersections.